Just, okay. Welcome to the Wednesday night uh, service. Uh, we're going to, to uh, open up in prayer, and then Brother Eddie's going to come and, and uh, lead us in our singing. So uh, let's pray. Father, thank you again for your love, your grace, your mercy. Now, Lord, even though our pastor is away, we expect a good night tonight. We expect things to still work and still go on. Lord, uh, we thank you for the good reports we have uh, received and the good reports that we received from Brother Yoder and, and uh, uh, Lord and uh, other missionaries. Uh, Lord, I just pray that uh, as we continue the work here, Lord, that our minds, our hearts, our spirit will be set on, on you and listening to what you have for us tonight. So, Lord, we will give you all the praise and all the thanks for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Brother Ed. Okay, let's go ahead and take our Bibles, or I'm sorry, our hymn books, and turn to page number 195. I'm glad I got my one mistake out of the way early. 195, let's stand. Amen. Still looking for that page. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name, verse 2. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus is abides within there at the cross where he took me in glory to his name glory to his name glory to his name there to my heart was the blood of mine glory to his name on verse 4 Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood. Well, Brother Eddie made his first mistake after I made my first mistake. But we've already opened in prayer, so just keep your seats and please turn your hymnals to 337. Trust and obey. 337, and Brother Eddie will lead us in the singing. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey. Burden. I'm sorry, verse number three. Boy, things really get strange when the pastor's not here, don't they? Verse number three. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow he share, but our toil he doth 
richly repaid. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no I got a few announcements here, so let me get them scattered out of here and st start you off with this one. Uh, the, the Cato's are having a uh, yard sale, and uh, this will be on Friday from 9 to 5 and Saturday 8 to 5. And the address, if you uh, want it, we'll leave it down there on the table, but it's 1788. L-I-N-N-E-T Avenue, Lennett Avenue. Lots of nice toys, or tools for sale. Lots of nice tools for sale. And then over in the fellowship hall, we have some uh, plus size uh, clothing for the ladies. Uh, there's three bags of them. If you wanna go over there and after church and go through them, see if you can use them, or if anybody you know can use them. Uh, take uh, what you need. Okay, now our, our prayer guide. Did everybody get a prayer guide? If you didn't, raise your hand and we'll get one to you. Everyone get a prayer guide. Turn it to the, on the inside to the coming events. The coming events is our RU program at the uh, CRC prison at, uh, and uh, CRC out at Orient. I uh, continue to pray for these ministries in our Reformers Unanimous program. And then we have, uh, that's on June, uh, the 16th, and then the 17th at uh, 7 o'clock, we always meet here in this church for the RU program, and it lasts till probably around 10. And if you know anybody that needs this or that can use this program, uh, it's open for anybody that wants to come. Um, on the 18th, of course, we are out to uh, um, the prison um, at, uh, what's the name of it? London, at London. And hopefully, with by July, be praying about the one right across the street, street is Madison County Institution. And we're hoping to be in there by July. So continue to pray about that. Uh, the uh, Saturday the 18th also is for soul winning and visitation. That starts at 10 o'clock. Anybody who wants to come to that is welcome. We always have something to do. We always have a bus route that needs help. We always have uh, uh, people who want to have par uh, to partner up and go out and learn how to knock on doors and invite people to church. And uh, you, if you're, you know, you can do that and you're confident that uh, you can do that and you could certainly help some young person that wants to, wants to do that. So uh, that starts at 10 o'clock every Saturday morning. Uh, June the 10th through the 18th, uh, that was our uh, missions trip, and they're on that now. The pastor texted me earlier today, and he said, keep praying for everything that's going on. He, it's just incredible what the Lord is doing. They've had three services so far. 115 souls have been saved, and they have another one tonight, and uh, it, will be, it will begin our time. It will begin about 9 o'clock, so continue to pray that uh, all goes well there and many more souls, their hearts are open, their understanding is open, and they uh, reach out their heart and call on uh, Christ to save them. Um, there is um, two people I would like for you to add to the salvation list. Add to your salvation list, Glenn and Nancy Hettersheet. It's spelt just like it sounds. H-E-T-T-E-R-S-H-E-E-T. Hettersheet. And then Jim and Karen Weaver. 
Jim and Karen Weaver. Let's not forget to pray for our missions. Is especially the Cato's who are going back to Brazil. Uh, pray, for, pray for Sarah Cato. I haven't got an update on her, but she was the Cato daughter that just got married. Do you have an update on her? Oh, she's there, right there. She was there, yeah. Wow, I, I, I didn't even see you. How's things going? You're good. Good, good. But she, uh, she just got married the next day. Next day it was, wasn't it? or two days after you ended up in the hospital yeah and uh, wow and so uh, God uh, God saw her through that and hopefully they will be headed to Brazil when end of December okay all right so keep praying for that uh, pray for her sister who is down there with her husband already and uh, getting him acquainted to the area and and uh I'm sure he's had some interesting things happen to him. We've already heard some reports about, uh, you know, you step into a strange cu country like that, and um, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, you, you learn to uh, depend on God and walk by faith in a hurry because uh, it's, it's not like living at home, you know. So uh, keep praying for them. Pray for all of our missionaries. Pray for the unreached people groups. Uh, Brother Moreland and Brother Yoder are over there now and uh, heard good reports from them. They are, they're having, uh, making great strides. Uh, pray that, uh, uh, Lord, that they can uh, make greater strides. Um, this needs to be done uh, quickly in my mind because we, not, we do not know when uh, Christ is coming back. And uh, it, it, I believe it's going to be short. But uh, we need to uh, always keep them in prayer that God will open up doors quickly to these unreached people groups as they try to uh, translate uh, the Bible into their language. They've never had a Bible in their language, uh, and it's uh, God is putting the right people in the right place at the right time, and we just have to depend on God for that. It's a, it's a tall order, and we can't do it. We have to depend on God to do it. Amen? I uh, pray for everybody on our cancer list, the military, uh, the praying for, praising for the, uh, uh, everybody is in authority. Boy, we need to lift our leaders up and uh, lift our country up that God will, um, you know, allow our leaders to uh, open up their understanding and, and start fearing God and start doing that which is right and, and not letting uh, people, certain groups influence them and uh, that they will always do the right thing, but I pray that, that they'll start uh, fearing God because, uh, the, you know, the Bible says to know him is to fear him, and then that is, that's not a fear that he's going to hurt you. That's a fear that knowing who he is, and he's a sovereign God. He's the only true living God. And when you come to that point and when you realize that, uh, it, it puts you in a frame of mind that, you should uh, desire to get to know more about him once you realize that he's the only one you're going to answer to. Uh, you grow up, you don't have to answer to mom and dad, you don't have to answer to big brother or big sister. You answer to a true living God, and there's uh, one, one of two places every soul is going to go, and that's heaven or hell. And we do not back up from that. I do not apologize for it. That's just the truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen? That's why we tell them in prison. The truth will set you free. And then we got uh, the uh, ministries around here at the church that we pray for. Pray for all the people who are on the, our health list, especially for uh, Jeanette Anderson's uh, mom, Ethel, Ethel White, that was uh, in a tragic accident. And uh, she's uh, um, not in very good shape. She's got a lot of mending to do, and they don't know just how much mending is going to be possible for her to come back, whether she'll be in a wheelchair for the rest of her life or what. But just keep praying, praying about that. And uh, so at this time, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Don Taylor to come and lead us in prayer. And as he comes and leads us, why uh, we pray that everybody will be, uh, have their minds, their hearts, and their spirit turned toward God, that you'll be crying out to him for loved ones in your family. 
and uh, just agree with him in prayer as he comes and leads us in prayer. Brother Doc. Okay, let's pray. Dear Father, Lord, we we thank you, Lord, for just being the awesome God that you are. Thank you that we can come to your throne of grace, Lord, and seeking mercy for those in need, including us, Lord. Father, we would just like to start off by praising you, Lord, for the results we're hearing coming back that's going on in Mexico, Lord, all the souls being saved, and those that are hungry for your gospel, Lord. And a lot of them has never heard, Lord, and now they are. We just thank you for your salvation that you're giving them, Lord. Thank you for the protection that you're giving them all of them down there, Lord, and you're making a way for all this to happen. Lord, I just pray that you continue binding the strong one, Lord, that, that those that are bound by him will be set free. Lord, as we come to you tonight here together, everything that's said and done be honoring to you and be pleasing in your sight. Father, I do like to continue praying for the Wharton family, Lord. And Father, I just pray that you, you bless them and take care of them, both health and physical needs. Father, I pray for all these ministries that's going on here at the church, Lord, are you inside and, and here Friday nights and the lives being changed there as well, Lord. Thank you for the, the hearts of people here at Bible Baptist Church that want to finance that program and keep it going, Lord, and giving those a chance to also get set free for those chains that sure bind us. Pray for the soul winning and bus visitation, Lord. All those that go out and labor, Lord. And I just pray that the, the fruit would come to, to bear witness soon, Lord, that they would grow for them. Lord, I also pray that uh, whatever's going on with this bus, Lord, that it be found, that it can be fixed. Pray for this upcoming Father and Son barbecue, Lord. Maybe some might even get to go there and have fellowship. And maybe even a lost one, Lord, and would hear the gospel there. Upcoming functions here at the church, Lord. Pray for spiritual growth for all these on the list, Lord. Each and every one of us need to continue reading your word and that we get to know it for ourselves and know when we hear the false doctrines that's out there Lord and to know your will for our lives Father I pray for all the missionaries that's out there Lord that you continue supplying their needs whether direct or indirect Lord even through us Pray for the Rice family, especially as it is lifted up tonight. And bless them, Lord. And keep them safe and prosperous, Lord. All these unreached people groups, Lord, so many that don't even have a, a gospel that's printed to where they can read the gospel in their language, Lord. I pray that the finances would continue to come in, that, that these words could be printed and Bibles handed out in their language it's been said that why should we hear the gospel twice when some out there has never even heard it once i pray that you continue blessing that ministry lord all these on salvation lord we have so many besides this list lord there's all of us have family members that's 
If they was to die today, they'd be going to hell for sure, Lord. I pray that their eyes would be opened and that they'd be willing to even hear the gospel. But once they hear it, to do something about it, Lord. So many times, it seems like it's, it is falling on deaf ears. We know that sin is pleasurable for a season, but there'll come a day when it's too late. I just pray that today would be the day of their salvation, Lord. All these on this list, my family included, Lord. There are many lost ones. Lord, I pray for those that have cancer, Lord, and that's ill on this list. Lord, I just pray that you touch their bodies today, Lord, and they would know that it's been touched by you. That we'd hear of miracles, Lord, in the next couple of days from just the touch of your healing hand. Some of them have no hope, Lord. I pray that you'd give them comfort during the time of their illness. And Lord, when the miracles do come, I pray that they'd stop and think before they say that it was a mistake. And they'd take your glory away before they even have a chance to be thankful. Open their eyes as well. Lord, the military, I pray for each and every one of them that's out there tonight serving, and helping to protect not only America, but other countries around the world, Lord. Our military get cut down so quick. But I pray that you'd give them a good night, protect them. Our police forces as well, Lord, it seems like they've become a, a target now for any would-be assassin. Living in crazy times. Surely we see the end coming. Lord, I pray for all those that's in authority from our governors and mayors right on up through the House and the Senate and our President, Lord, that they would come to their senses, Lord, and just realize that you are the mighty God, the only true living God, creator of the heavens and earth and that America would turn back to you. And the things that we see going on in the news media today that 20, 30 years ago was against the law, and now it's broadcasted everywhere. I pray that the people would wake up and turn back to you, Lord, and repent of our sins. Father, I just pray that you be with Brother Hamby tonight as he opens up your word. And help us to be attentive, Lord, and hear what is being preached on tonight. May it minister to us and open our eyes, Lord. May everything that's said and done be pleasing to you here tonight. We thank you for all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we go any farther, we always like to recognize our visitors. If you haven't been here on a Wednesday night, we'd ask that you uh, would stand and, and give us your name and where you're from and uh, so we can make you feel welcome. So uh, raise your hand if there's any visitors who haven't been here. The gentleman here on the first row, stand up, give us your name. Gary? Okay, Gary, you are from? He's from Utah, and he's traveling through, so I want you to make Gary feel welcome. And the gentleman in front of him, Doug. Doug, is, uh, we uh, first met him in our U program, I believe it was, last year you came. But uh, uh, he uh, uh, came back and came to our U program last week. And uh, so uh, make Doug feel welcome. And over here we got this gentleman here sitting beside of Xavier, and his name is Luke. Luke has uh, moved into the area. He was looking for a church, and his uh, uh, pastor recommended our church, and gave him, he comes very highly recommended, and he's already talked to Andy, a few to, uh, uh, Andy uh, Slayball, our team leader. So uh, make Luke feel welcome, and let's all give them all a big hand, amen. Uh, 
Brother Eddie is going to come and lead us in a song, lead us in the last song, and it'll be page 223, and uh, we'll sing the first, second, and the last stanza, but he's going to sing the first, second stanza, and then before we sing the fourth stanza, we'll uh, greet all of our visitors, make them feel welcome, and uh, the visitors, you just fill out that card, keep the pen as our gift to you, and drop that card when the offering is taken, and we'll appreciate it very much. It gives us a record of your uh, visit for it with us tonight, okay? Brother Eddie. Okay, page number 223. Let's go ahead and stand as you find that. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me near, near, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me near, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me near, 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 blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me near, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Look around for somebody to shake hands with and welcome them here tonight. Let's find our seats. There are depths of love that I cannot know till I cross the narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I may not reach till I rest in peace with thee. Draw me near, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Amen. You may be seated as a man come to take up the offering.
Brother John. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this night that you've given us where we can come to hear the word of God preached, and we pray that you'd be at the preacher that's going to preach tonight, that you'd fill him with the spirit, and that each one of us would get something from the message tonight that we could use in our daily lives, and we do thank you for the chance and the ability to give back a portion that you've blessed us with, and we pray that you'd uh, bless this offering tonight, and we pray that you'd be able to bless us and keep us to play, uh, use it in a proper way, and we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Brother Eddie's going to come and give us a special, and then he's going to open up God's Word and teach us from God's Word. But before he does, I forgot to mention his wonderful wife over here, Cindy. Uh, they met, she was on, he was running the bus route, and they met on the bus route. And uh, man, you talk about a, a sweet little, sweet lady. She is a, a sweet lady. You ought to get to know her if you don't know her. She has helped him and been uh, his, literally his right hand through Vacation Bible School. He teaches Vacation Bible School all over. And uh, he's done a lot, a lot of work with the children and does a tremendous work. And, and uh, God has just uh, blessed him with many talents. And as you will see here, so I'm going to turn it over to Brother Eddie and let him have the service. When I'm low in the spirit, I cry, Lord, lift me up. I want to go higher to Thee. But the Lord knows I can't live on the mountain. So He sent down a valley for me. He leads me beside still waters somewhere in the valley below he 
draws me aside to be tested and tried. But in the valley, he restored my soul. It's dark as a dungeon. I cry, Lord, lift me up. I want to go higher to thee. But he tells me there's joy in my sorrows. And there's victory in trials for me. He leads me beside still waters. Somewhere in the valley draws me aside to be tested and tried. In the valley he restoreth my soul. In the valley, in the valley, in the valley he restoreth my soul. Okay, my brother Wallace was talking. I finally figured out why I was so nervous up here. Usually I preach to 10 and 12 year old kids. Brother, I'm going to go ahead and switch microphones here. There we go. Should I set this aside or doesn't matter? Okay. All right. If you'll take your Bibles, please, and turn to the book of 2 Peter. Usually I'll be preaching at a camp or a vacation Bible school or a children's rally. I used to do this kind of stuff, but not a lot anymore. Um... And then my wife and I found out that really when, when I get out my, my puppets or do a chop talk, you know the grown-ups like that too. <laughs> so, uh, so we're trying to get into more churches doing that kind of ministry as well for the whole family. So please pray for us as, as we try to transition our ministry to reaching entire families for Christ. And Pastor, uh, Pastor Slaybaugh has been helping us out with that. Um, 2 Peter, I promise I'll get used to you here in a few minutes. I've got a technique. I'll just think of you all as kids when I look out at you. Really, really old kids. Uh, you remember, uh, what was that pastor's name? Pastor Noel, the first time we went there. Uh, he had an older church down in uh, Twin Valley. Uh, down Twin Valley Baptist Church, and beautiful place, but just, just nobody younger than us, really. And there, there were two little girls that were visitors there. Our first time there, and uh, they were the only two little girls in there. And, and some of you know Cindy. She just attaches onto these kids. And so she's just had us sit right there beside the two little girls that were in church. And uh, they didn't come back for the evening service. But, but, uh, but Cindy and I did, and as we sat there, we found out, found the little pages that they'd been coloring. They were really young, and one of them had scribbled a note while they were sitting between us, and it had said, if you, one of them said to the other, did you notice that everybody in this church is at least 80 years old? <laughs> Let me ask you a question tonight. Has anybody seen my notes to preach my sermon? No, no, that's not the question. I'm sure I have that. Wow. Am I going to have to do this from memory? Let me see. Boy, this is going to be an adventure. Hot dog. I've never done this before. Let me ask you a question tonight. 
What is the most important, Cindy, it's not up there if you're looking for it, honey. I had it up here. Yeah, it's not back there. What is the most, well, well, no, I don't think that's it. Nope, that's not it. Don't worry, I'll make something up. What, what is the most important characteristic that a Christian can have? Hey, brother, I didn't see you yet. Uh, l- l- let me put it another way. What are people going to be looking for when they come through that back door? When Gary came through the back door tonight, what was he looking for? Got it right off the bat. Uh, uh, my son Thomas was looking for a church. He'd been hurt. He'd been hurt. I don't blame him for leaving. He, he was mistreated. He was. Thomas stayed out of church for a couple years, didn't he? Always wanted to get back in church. Finally got back in church. He, he goes to the same place that Tim does now, my other brother, or my other son. And uh, fi- they're finally in church now. Couldn't be more excited. And he came back to me. He told me the same thing that Tim did when Tim went to that other church. He said, Dad... Those people, I could just tell when I walked in that door that they really loved us and they were just so friendly. That's what everybody's looking for when they're looking for a church, even even us old timers. Don't ever say, man, I'll never leave Bible. It could happen. It could happen. I don't want you to leave. I don't think there's any better place for you to be. But it could happen. You could find yourself looking for another church one of these days. And don't go out there thinking, well, the only thing that matters to me is that it's a King James only church. Or they got bus routes that I'm in. They go soul winning. No, that's not going to be it. If they don't love you when you walk through that door, you're going to turn around and walk right back out. That's what people are looking for. And that is the mark of a mature Christian. You know that, isn't that what Jesus said? How are they going to know that we're his disciples? Yep, yep. They're going to see that love, and that's how they're going to know that you're a Christian, and they're going to want them some of that. And that's what we've got to be, church. When, When I ask that question, I really thought it would take you longer to figure out what it was, what the answer was. I really did. Old blabbermouth over here, though. (laughs) We used to have these conversations back in Bible school all the time. You you know how how smart us Bible school kids were. But we'd sit up all night, and me and one of my friends, Ron, we'd, we'd talk to each other. He says, what's more important, you know, Bible reading or prayer? We could talk for hours about that. And it's kind of silly because both of them are important. And I know there's all kinds of things that a Christian needs to have, and they are all important. But the ultimate thing that we need that's going to draw people is love. 1 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to start reading them. Verse number 1. The former treaties have I made, O Theopolis, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. I'm not, I'm in Acts, I'm sorry. I thought that didn't sound familiar. That was my fault. Technical difficulties. Second Peter chapter 1, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. Now that was my first mistake. Strike the first one. This was my first mistake. To them have I obtained like precious faith with us through the righteous, with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God 
and of Jesus Christ our Lord according to his divine power. He hath given us all things that pertain to life and goodness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now watch verse 5, what he starts to do here. And besides this, give all diligence and add to your faith virtue. See, faith is the first thing that you have when you're a Christian. That's how you get saved. We're saved by grace through faith. But you need to add to that. You don't just stop at faith, and you don't stop having faith. You add to your faith. It says, add to your faith virtue. And uh, that's, that's the second thing a Christian starts to have, is he tries to live a virtuous life. He's got faith. Now he's trying to live virtuously. And then, of course, he's going to need knowledge. So, and to virtue, knowledge, verse 6. And to knowledge, temperance, which is self-control. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. You see the progression here? He keeps adding on and adding on. And there's a particular order that these things are in. You have to start with faith. And, and you can't start with knowledge. You have to start with faith. You have to add to that virtue. And then you're going to need knowledge. And you keep adding to that. Verse number 7, into godliness, brotherly kindness. And finally, at the end of verse 7, he gets to the end of the list. And to brotherly kindness, charity. It's another word for love. I'm a King James Version man. I believe in every single word in the King James Version of the Bible. And I'm not changing that word when I say that charity means love. It is the word love. The language changes around us from year to year, but this old book never changes. And charity means love. It still means love today. Let's turn to the love chapter. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now, I'm, I'm not going to read through the book of 1 Corinthians. It, it, we, we get up to the 12th chapter of, of uh, the book of 1 Corinthians, and we realize what a mess this church is in. I mean, the, there, there's corruption there. They're falling short of what they ought to be. There's sin in the church. Uh, things have slipped through that ought not to be there. And they've come to this point where everybody wants to be the preacher, and everybody wants to be the prophet, and everybody wants to be the deacon. And they're all saying, well, I don't have an important enough job in the church, and, and I ought to be up here uh, uh, doing this and doing things. People ought to see me. And he talks about all these things about, you know, does, does an ear, does it change from being an ear to, to become an eye? Does that make any sense? No. It takes all kinds of people in the church to make it function. God has a purpose for all of us. We shouldn't be jealous of what each other is doing. But, but this, is our, this is our picture of modern day Christian. Yep. Pastor Slayball couldn't do it without me. Boy, I'm glad he's got me up here. Help him out. That ought not to be the picture that we're presenting. You, 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 know what, you know what the picture is of the New Testament Christian? Paul and Luke and Silas and Peter, every single one of them. And usually in chains... This is what they were back then. Not, man, I got my rights. No, sirs. I'm, I'm sorry, but have we got any choice but to go out and preach the things that we've seen and we've heard? We don't have any choice. And then go on to witness to the people that arrested them. That's the part I like. And that's what we need to be. We need to show forth this thing of love. Look, look in chapter number 13. 
Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Hey, if I was the greatest preacher of all time, and man, I was an orator that could keep them spellbound, and people would flock to the church just to hear those smooth, slick words that are coming out of my mouth. Kind of like Pastor Slayball. Hey, if I was all that and didn't have love, it'd be worthless. That's what the Bible says, isn't it? It wouldn't be worth anything. And though I have the gift of prophecy, he's talking about gifts now and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. What a verse. I got faith enough to move mountains. Faith enough to move mountains. And don't love my fellow man. Doesn't amount to a hill of beans. Is that too country for you? That's my dad coming through. Verse number three, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor... And though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Oh my goodness. Bestowing, giving everything away, becoming a martyr, being burned, and yet he doesn't love people. It's worthless. It doesn't mean anything. I mean the distance between a Christian that is almost there and that has arrived where God wants him to be. God wants us to look out and see the world through his eyes. If you love somebody, you have to love the people that they love. You have to. That's the way it works. I know it's hard sometimes for my wife to love my family, but she does. Her, her family, nothing to it, honey. You have such a lovable mother-in-law, or I have such a lovable mother-in-law. It's not hard for me. But you have to love the people that, sh that the, the people that the one that you love loves. How many double negatives was that? You know what I'm trying to tell you. If you love God, you're going to have to love the people that God loves, and he loved the whole world. And that it doesn't sound like a job for sissies, does it? This is, this is hard work. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is where Christianity gets hard. We're not back there at Christianity 101 where we're getting everything done by faith. He, he said here, verse number 31, And yet I show unto you a more excellent way. Chapter, verse number 31 of the previous chapter, before he goes into the love chapter, He's been talking about all these spiritual gifts. He's been talking about all the positions in the church. He's been talking about all those things that people have been arguing about. And then he says, I'm going to show you a more excellent way. And we need to find that more excellent way. That's the way we need to operate to draw people to Christ. Verse number four. Charity, love, suffereth long. That means patience. So love is patient and is kind. Man, if I could just do those two things, if I could just be patient and kind, if you could just be patient and kind, how much would it change your life? Just patient and kind. Brother Hamby, I am patient and kind. How about the one, to the ones that you're closest to? You know, that's where it's hardest. I mean, we go, into, we go pick somebody up for church, somebody that's wanting to visit. Maybe we've never even known them before. We go up and shake, shake Gary's head and say, Gary, I'm so glad you're here. And, you know, but that's a nice shirt that you're wearing. That's, that's nice. I like your haircut there. But 
But you go, but you go and, the, and you drag your son to church and say, Man, why didn't you cut your hair yet? Get back there and take off that T-shirt and put on a tie. Honey, if I'm late the night for church, I swear you're going to walk. Now get out to that car. Sometimes we show more patience and kindness to the people that we're more distant to, people that we barely know at church, than our spouses and our kids. Patience, kindness. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. This is not puffed up. You, you know what the, that's saying? It's saying I'm not going to put myself as number one. And I'm not going to be thinking that I'm all that. Very first thing that they teach you when you go into missionary school. Very first thing. You walk in the door. Brother, it's not about you anymore. And that's true. It's not about us. It's about them and their relationship to Christ. It's about him. And the fact that he loves them and we need to reach them for Christ. Verse number five. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Oh, wow, that's a hard one, isn't it? Not getting offended. Mm. Wow. Uh, I, I heard this old story uh, about this lady who was out driving her car, and when she came up to a stoplight, it was about ready to turn, and she was going turn red, and she was about ready to whip through that stoplight, but somebody in the other lane whipped over in front of her and stopped, and stopped her. And, oh, man, she started honking her horn, and she was beating on top of the roof to get the guy's attention, giving him several hand signals to make him move on, and she was yelling things out the window that nobody ought to ever yell. And all of a sudden, back in her rearview mirror, these red and blue lights started flashing, and this, and this loud siren, whoop! And this big old police officer got out and said, ma'am, step out of the car. And she said, what is this about? And he put his hand on his pistol and said, ma'am, I said, step out of the car now. And she got really nervous and she stepped out of the car. He took her and drug her back to the back of the car and handcuffed her and patted her down and then put her in the back of the police cruiser. Had, had another car come and impound her vehicle and took her to the police station and had her booked and sat her in a room for three hours. And she just sat there just scared to death. After three hours, he came back in the room. He said, ma'am, I have to apologize. Here are all your belongings. He handed her a purse, unlocked her handcuffs, said, let me escort you to the front door. You're free to go. Your car is out front. And he took her out front and said, ma'am, I am so sorry that this happened. It was a complete misunderstanding. And she was still kind of shook up. She said, what, what was that all about anyway? He said, well, ma'am, you have to understand. I pulled up behind your car, and, and I saw your bumper sticker on the back that said, WWJD, what would Jesus do? And I saw your little cross hanging there from the rearview mirror. And I noticed on your dashboard that you had your Bible up there on the dash. Honest, honest. Naturally, I thought that you'd stolen the car. That's not the testimony that we ought to have. Seeketh not our own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. We are so quick to think the worst in people. We ought to be thinking the best in people. Uh, that's another story. I, I just remembered this today. Years ago, maybe you heard about this in a church. It's in Ohio, but it's over along Route 77, and I used to, used to know exactly what town it was in. I can't remember now. But there was this church that had been battling with this business that was right across the road from them. They were kind of out in the country. There was just this church 
And across the street was a strip club. And the church was utterly convinced that according to the law, that strip club did not have the proper right to be in that area of the town. And the strip club was equally convinced that that church needed to just leave them alone. Well, the church went over there and started picketing. Every evening at five, or every Friday evening and every Saturday evening, that church would start picketing, and they'd always have about a dozen or two dozen people out there with big old signs. I, I read about this in the dispatch years ago. And that went on for a couple months, and it just made the owner of the establishment mad, and it made the ladies who worked there even more angry because it was biting into their profits. So they got into their outfits that they wore on Friday nights and started to picket the church on Sunday mornings. Back and forth that they would walk. Didn't slow the Christians down one bit. The next week they had three dozen people out there picketing. And the next Sunday morning, those ladies did the same exact thing. And this went on for a couple of months. And then it started to get cold. And then there was an early snow in the fall. And the pastor looked out there and he thought, something just isn't right about this. And on that Sunday morning, he went out there during the Sunday school hour and he brought those ladies coffee that they'd made for Sunday school. They had coffee during their uh, Sunday morning meeting. And then during the church service, he said, look, he said, you can pick it out there or you can come in here and sit down. Let me, have you, let me get you a pew. Please sit down. I'll put you, I'll put you back in the back. I promise nobody will disturb you. But you're going to freeze to death out here. He invited them into his church. The ladies of the church walked back. A lot of them had shawls on because it was warm, because it was hot out there. Or, I'm sorry, because it was cold out there. But it was kind of warm in the church, so the ladies would bring back their sweaters and the shawls. And the, and the ladies that were sitting on the back row there said thank you, and they put them on. This went on for a couple of months. But these ladies were coming to church. And one by one, they started to come forward and get saved. Hey, Brother Hamby, that's, that's disgusting, Brother Hamby. They ought to know better. No, they shouldn't. How are they going to know any better? They're not saved. I didn't know anything about right or wrong until I had the Holy Spirit living inside of me. Oh, I, I, uh, Mrs. Taylor's not in here, is she? Okay. I, I remember when, when uh, Jim's brother came to church one year. And he, he had big black hair, big black sunglasses, just blacked out the sun, and a long black trench coat. He, he, looked, he looked like a hippie Johnny Cash. His hair came down to his hips. I remember him walking up the middle of that church, and man, the people just parted like the Red Sea. <laughs> and I went up and shook his hand. You know he was the nicest, quietest guy in the world. Love thinketh no evil. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Verse 6, rejoiceth not in iniquity. I'm not talking about rejoicing in their sin and partaking of their sin, not condemning their sin. I'm talking about rejoicing in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never fails. Love never fails. Whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, 
We prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. I'll tell you how I've heard these verses preached my whole life. And, and, and Pastor Rock, who was here before Pastor Slayball, great teacher, great teacher, smarter than me by a country mile. But he would say that these verses are talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you know, prophesying, prophesying, the gift of tongues, speaking in foreign tongues, all these things and how they'd be done away when we got this, the completed word of God that I'm holding in my hand right now. You know what? That's fine. I can draw that from these verses. It's certainly there. But being a really, really simple guy, just a guy that likes to read the Bible, I'll tell you what I personally think. I think that these verses are still talking about love. I really do. That's just my own personal opinion. Prefix that to say whatever you, your pastor says, that's, the correct, that's correct, okay? But I think we're still talking about love. I think it could still be applied. Look at what it says. Love never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. One of these days, we're not going to be as smart as we used to be. I'm already feeling the effects of that, tonight in particular. Verse number 9, for now we know in part, we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come. When we love people with the perfect love that God wants us to have, when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. I, I think that for us to love the way Christ wants us to love, I, I think that that's the ultimate mark of a mature Christian. Verse number 12, for now we see through a glass, darkly. But then, face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. When we arrive at that place that God wants us to be and we're able to love the way God wants us to love, I, I, th I think that that is, is a place when we have arrived at being... Have you ever met somebody that you could tell right off, practically even before they said a word, Man, they're saved. They're a Christian. You ever, you ever met somebody like that? A um, couple people come to mind. Marietta Kaufman. Marietta Kaufman. She always had a kind word. Not just for me. She had a kind word for everybody. She didn't have a mean bone in her body. And every time you looked at her, you could just see peace. And I remember when I was 10, 12, 11 years old, running around here, and when I first started thinking about serving God, I'd think to myself, man, I want to be like her when I grow up. What a kind, wonderful person. I think that she had a... My wife and I, well, for quite a few years, we read the Bible every single year. Now we're studying through it. Uh, so that takes a little bit longer, so it's not quite once a year. Marietta Kaufman read her Bible twice a year, every single year. And she started to live it. And it was just part of her life. And I believe that when you get that close to God, when you're listening to Him that closely, 
the way that you're acting towards other people that you meet is, is him being able to love them through you. I remember standing right out there in that, in that uh, do you call it a foyer? Good enough word. If I standing down there where the stained glass window was, at least it used to be, it might still be there. But I was standing down there and uh, my wife and I were going through a hard time. It was our first year being, being in the ministry full time. I'd, I'd quit my job. God took care of us. But the hardest thing was, man, I came to Cindy and I said, honey, we are flat broke. I've got enough money for the tithes this Sunday, but that is all that we have got. She said, Eddie, we have to give our faith promise. Honey, I know. Eddie, we have never missed our faith promise. It was $25. I know, honey, but Eddie, we've got to give our faith promise. I said, Cindy, let's pray about it, okay? So we prayed about it. I went out there and uh, came to church that morning. We had promised that we would put that $25 in the offering plate every Sunday morning, and we did not have it. Cindy's still praying. I'm thinking, Lord, this will be a miracle if you're able to give it to me. Marietta Kaufman, now when you, when you call yourself a preacher and you go out there and you start preaching, sometimes people come up and put money in your hand. When it's not my own church, I'll give it to the preacher and say, here, this person gave this to me. What would you like for me to do, to it, do with it? When it's in my own church, I know that they're trying to help me. Marietta Kaufman came up to me and shook my hand and pushed something into my palm. That had happened often enough that I knew what it was. I said, oh, thank you. She said, no, no, i got to tell you something. I said, oh, I know, I know, and I appreciate it. Thank you so much. She said, no, Eddie, listen, I need to tell you, God told me to do this last night, and he told me to give this to you. And I said, God did? He said, yes, and he told me to give you exactly this much. Right? I've got a witness and I opened my palm, and it was $25. I want to be able to love people so much that God's able to work through me and love them through me. I'm going to tell you a big secret. You're not going to hear a lot of people say, you're not going to hear a lot of people, uh, a lot of preachers tell you and admit we don't always preach things that we're able to live up to ourselves. If I did, there's a whole lot of things in this Bible I would not be able to preach. I'm not telling you that I love people the way that I ought to. But I want to. It's the desire of my heart. I think that God could get hold of one single person and speak to their heart about loving people the way that they ought to. And that he could change a whole church that way. And in the very last verse, if I'm able to find it, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 in the love chapter. Now by the faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. The greatest of these is love. Our Heavenly Father, please speak to our hearts. Lord, please Help us to be able to love people the way that we ought to. Father, we fell, fall short so often. Lord, I ask you to just reach into our hearts and give us the heart that you would have us to have, Lord. Give us the eyes to see people the way that you do. And Father, use us to reach the lost and be the church that we ought to be. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand as the piano player plays. There's a great, wonderful place to pray up here. 
many great things have happened here. God's able to take just one person and start something that would change an entire church. It's a great service tonight. So many people here. But what he could do with us, Lord, if he was just turned loose. But the Holy Spirit of God can't be turned loose unless we're what we ought to be. I appreciate all of you that came out tonight. And Pastor Slayball, when he called me a couple of weeks ago, he said, now I'm taking a bunch of them with me, Brother Hamby. There'll be about 20 of them or so with me. So I don't know how many will show up. But boy, this looks like a really good crowd. And I appreciate you coming. Let's go ahead and take our hymnals. Let's see. Uh, page number 246. I appreciate you putting up with me tonight. But I have thoroughly enjoyed myself. It's so good to come home, you know. Higher ground. Let's go ahead and sing the first verse tonight. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, give us traveling mercies on the way home, and I pray, Father, that you'll give us a great week and bring us together Safely again Sunday, it's in your son's name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen.